Linda Sands grew up in rural Oklahoma. As a girl, she worked as a pecan picker. To family members later in life, she was called Mamaji, Creek for Little Mother. Last October, she died of complications from diabetes at age 73. She was the symbol of all the sacrifice that went into ensuring that m my family has a tribal identity today. John Adev Chowdhury is Richinda Sands' nephew. When the decision in Mercur came out, she was the first person I thought of. Chowdhury is ambassador for the Muscogee Creek Nation, a diplomatic position representing the tribe's sovereign interests. He sees his mama G as his family's last matriarch. Her life wrapped up in issues the Supreme Court spoke to. It was a life of struggle, and it's consistent with uh, the struggle that all of our families as Muscogee Creek uh, have, have faced. And to have affirmation from the federal government's highest court that despite our struggles and because of the sacrifices of people who came before us, our nation remains whole and our reservation remains whole. It was a powerful moment that resonated with me on a very deep personal level. That struggle and sacrifice trace back to what's known as the Trail of Tears, the 19th century forced removal of the Muscogee and other Indians from their ancestral homes in the southeast to reservations in what would become Oklahoma. Today's map still carries the clues. Tallahassee and Tulsa are variations on the same Creek word for Old Town. Our story is a story of difficulties but rebirth and a continued chain. Because of the ravages of time and unfortunate efforts by the state government and the federal government to dismantle this notion of home in our lands, it was an elusive concept, feeling at home in your nation's lands. And that's a feeling that many Creeks know, and a lot of Native American folks know wherever their reservation or their territory is. The McGirt decision, written by Justice Neil Gorsuch, declared the lands remain within Indian reservations. Its direct impact is on crimes committed by tribal members on the reservation, giving the tribe and the federal government jurisdiction rather than the state. Not one inch of land, not one fistful of sand changed ownership by this ruling. Simply, it was a recogni recognition that the Muscogee Creek Nation's boundaries had never been disestablished or destroyed. But that's not what, what brought tears to so many of our eyes. You know, there's a picture in my living room of my mama G and my mom and, and their siblings, my uncle Cliff, my aunt Halloween, and my uncle Leon. And they're there with my grandparents. And each one of them had passed away due to the direct or indirect effects of removal, whether it be poverty or lack of uh, resources to health care. My aunt was the first one to make it out of her 50s. The COVID pandemic is hitting Native communities especially hard. The country is again focusing on its history of past and continuing history of racism. Do those things play into your feelings too about uh, the ruling and where things are now? Yeah, absolutely. The moment that we find ourselves, I think, uh, is beyond just pure readings of the law. Uh, the, the case itself was a beautifully written, well-reasoned opinion, but it exists in a larger context. And that context shows that we have to fight to keep the gains made on a social justice level. It's a context and history that include Richinda Sands.